so we've got Ross and Vicky here, and they've got a problem with a couple of roof windows. I think it is, isn't it, Ross? Yeah, four roof lights. Yeah, four. Uh, uh, four two of which are leaking, but uh, two of them seem to be okay. Yeah. Oh, so that's a fifty percent success rate there, isn't it? Yeah. Let's have a look at your video, your excellent video, and see what uh, see what the situation is, shall we? So she's got this old farmhouse, and on the back she's built this two-story extension and a new lounge and kitchen area which is a single story with a vaulted ceiling and four of these frameless roof lights. Ignore the dodgy block work and the ton of expanding foam around the patio doors which is not ideal but the main problems with the roof lights. So this is the view from the upstairs bedroom onto the roof. I wouldn't have expected to be able to see the exposed edges of the insulation and the plasterboard. I don't know if this is normal, but they've fitted the plasterboard right up to the inside of the glass and then skimmed right to the glass to, it looks like there should be some sort of bead there to hide the insulation and stuff. It's not a massive problem, I guess, it's just cosmetic, but um, I'd be interested to know if this, is, if this is normal. But the main problem is that the roof leaks. It's only eight months old, but you can see there's crumbly plaster and watermarks around the windows and also there's a long horizontal wet patch on one side of the roof. I can't see any problems on the roof right above that patch so I'm guessing it's water that's running down inside the ceiling and collecting on a batten. There's also loads of popped screws in the ceiling which is not ideal but I can fix those. Out on the roof there was three or four cracked tiles which were letting water in onto the roofing membrane underneath. That kind of been helping things so we found some similar tiles and replaced the cracked ones that the roofers had done nothing about other than like a half-arsed attempt to stick them back together with some silicon. So the roof lights have got this timber upstand, I think you call it. There's a patchwork of lead flashing all around the timber, which is nailed in place. But it's not sealed in any way, like either to itself or to the upstand or to the glass. I've lifted up some of the lead and there's just a bit of roofing membrane where the upstand comes through. But surely there should be some proper system to seal these frames um, around the tiles. Should there be some other sort of flashing? I, I've used the sticky flashing on a roll before on my own house. Should that have been used here instead of this um, like normal lead? I've seen a video on your channel with, with a roofing system specifically for low angle pitched roofs with windows in like this. Um, should that have been used? I, I don't know. It's a 15 degree pitch by the way if that makes a difference. But I'd really appreciate your opinion um, if you can confirm my suspicion that this is just dodgy workmanship and if so how best to fix it I don't want her to have to get these guys back out because based on what I've seen I don't think they really know what they're doing and I'm pretty sure that we can fix it between ourselves but um, I just appreciate some guidance on what best to do okay so that, that seems interesting so I hear you've just had the building inspector around to have a look. He, well, he was mostly concerned with the structural stuff because it's it's quite a, a big two-story extension that Vicky's had yeah. done. Um, so he was he was just making sure that everything's legit as far as the window height he was concerned. I think the window, one of the windows, or well, two of the windows are 100 mil too high, so we need to build a step up. The timber framing needs to be tied into the block work, but other than that, he was happy. And, and, and he was obviously looking at the flashing for these skylights and, and said that... Uh, he needed to review the spec for how the flashing had been done because it obviously wasn't right, which we, we kind of identified. So he's reasonably happy in giving us a list of things to, to fix. Ricky, what, so give us a little bit of background on this project. So it was a kind of self-build project um, where external teams have been drafted in um, when expertise has been required. So footings and things have been dug by ourselves, digger hired, okay. weekends work. We've done as much work as we could to keep costs down. Um, anything that required that extra level of expertise, so um, our brickies, our plasterers and our roofers um, is where we've drafted other people in, um, which is where the, we're a little bit uncertain of what we've drafted people in for with the roof lights um yeah. we've had we've had them out to repair the roof lights already the roof lights to my left that ross has just said aren't leaking they were actually initially leaking oh, really? um oh, okay. and they have been out already i think they've come out to repair the roof lights on two separate occasions now when ross hopped out and had a look the other day there was some cracked tiles which instead of being replaced and repaired have just been filled in with silicon so we're 
<laughs> we're now at the point where we're addressing the whole issue really and looking to just get it sorted and get it straight. Mm. Look, I don't want to depress you. I, I, I fully yeah. understand what it's like being caught in these situations. You try to save a bit of money, you try to do what you can and obviously bring people in and you think, okay, I'm bringing people in, they're professional, they're going to do the job, they're kind of going to do those bits I can't do. And then when they do and it's not right, you think, well, what did I gain? I might as well have done it myself, watched a few yeah. more YouTube videos and worked out maybe with a bit of advice what to do. First thing I, I look at is the, the roof covering itself. They're, they're Redland Stonewall tiles, are they? They're Marley Modern Concrete. So it's the equivalent to the Redland one. It's the Marley version, but they're basically the same pattern. I believe they go down to 17 degrees, the minimum I pitch think that you can 15 use. 15 pitch, I think. Your roof is 15. So yeah, they're, on their li- they're on their limit. Well, the Redland Stonewall, which is a very similar looking tile, goes down to 17. So that two degrees doesn't sound like anything you'd worry about. It kind of, you know, there's a, there's a margin in these things, but you're kind of working at the critical limit of these things. Now, if it's not a really exposed position, there's no driving rain, in, you know, if it's a coastal position or something like that, you probably wouldn't want to do the minimum pitch. You'd probably go up a bit from there. And you probably give yourself a slightly bigger head lap and you, you overlap them slightly more. But in this case, they are on, on their limit with the 15 yeah. degrees, not the end of the world. If the breather membrane underneath is done really well, and when I say really well, I'm talking about round the roof windows, up the sides, taped around so that everything is, is good. It gives you that second line of defence for the times when the rain did blow or the other thing that happens you get a bit of capillary action you get a bit of water creeping up underneath and leaking in through there if we assume that that's not the problem here if we assume that they're going to be okay those tiles you don't have to have them all stripped off when we look at that window just tell me something about the window because it doesn't look like a conventional roof window it's a frameless thing and it looks to me like it's what we might call a walkover window which is the thing you use on a flat roof that somebody has tipped up. Yeah, that's exactly right. So when we purchased the lights, we looked, um, had a look into what kind of roof lights to install costs. These lights, we spoke to the manufacturer about installation in a pitch roof, discussed the pitch of the roof. And um, this is Jess. <laughs> he wants yeah, to get involved. No, um, so we Dylan's got a dog the- as well. <laughs> so we discussed the pitch of the roof with the manufacturer, um, checked the guidelines for the installation. Um, they advised us that it was exactly the same protocol for the installation on a pitched roof, sent over all the specifications. Um, the frames weren't supplied, so they had to be built from timber. The roof lights were literally lifted up into position and popped into the frames after the frames yeah. had been built in situ. Okay, so they're, they're an ad hoc frame. Do they do a frame for it? No, so this company just supply the triple glaze panels. They don't supply yeah. the frame kits. Got it. Um, did they give you a spec for the frame? How to design yeah. the frame or not? Yeah, they so they sent over full instructions, full specification. Yeah. Um, and once the roof lights had been lifted into place, that was what we supplied to the roofers um, to ensure that things were done in accordance with manufacturer's guidelines for building control. When you've got a flat roof tile like that, you don't use a flashing on top of it because the rain will drive in sideways. You know, it'll get in. It'll, it'll get in through capillary action. It'll get in through just being blown in. That that flashing may lift slightly, you know, after a few years and when, with the wind and so on. What you would normally do, and I think you alluded to this, is, is that you would have the flashing underneath the tile, i.e. a secret gutter or something like that, or the other way, the, the, the way that my roofer prefers to do it is with a, what they call a soaker, which is a big angle piece of aluminium or whatever. It goes up a side the window, under the tile, and the next one, they overlap each other all the way down so that in the end, it comes out at the last tile, clear of the window and away. It really requires that kind of thing. Now, some people use a secret gutter, which is a... a a bit of GRP, which you could buy specifically for that purpose. You cut the batten slightly short. You put the secret gutter in there. Any water that leaks down the side of the tiles into the secret gutter and away. They're okay, except that sometimes they clog up. You know, after five years or so, you may notice a bit of damp coming in. My approach to this really was you've got to strip those tiles off around that. You've got to strip that flashing off. The flashing in many ways doesn't look too bad, you know, in the, 
the way he's dressed it over the tiles, but up the back there, it seems to kind of, kind of miss completely, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, it's all it's all the way around. It looks to me like he ran out of lead because the the lead <laughs> factor goes about halfway up the height of the upstands, and then there's there's another inch and a half of lead that's just been nailed on all the way around the circumference yeah. of it. You, you can see the timber frame there so if i yeah. can see that then surely water can get behind it and it's going to get into the, into the ceiling on the spec that they provide they do suggest having a kind of valley you can clearly see that the the flashing that they suggest should run under the tile up the side of the upstand and then under the glass they also suggest oh. having a, a valley on, on the left and right hand side it's basically an area that's at a lower level than than the than the yeah. tiles uh, and my thoughts were to get some of that um flash band it's called the, the kind of sticky yeah. back yeah uh, no. Don't look so keen there. <laughs> well, it, it, it's a temporary fix, you know. It, it, yeah. it, it's it's almost without wishing them malign Evo or anything. It's almost the hallmark of a cowboy when you see somebody who's been up and used it. You go, okay, that's 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 all very well if it's in the middle of the winter and somebody's got water pouring in. You say, let's use this product. Yeah. It'll give you three or four months, and then you do the job properly at some point in the future. Yeah. As a permanent fix, it's pretty rubbish actually. Um, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't even go down the flash band route. Okay. Uh, what I would look, you can get some substitute lead products, which are not bad at all. You may want to look at those rather than the genuine lead. And the reason I'm saying that is because some of them have got an adhesive back. Mm. And so if you were using it on that, like you say, take the glass off, use the substitute lead all the way round, mould it, stick it together you can really form a nice job when you do it you start from the bottom so if you did that and then you dressed it down the side then all you'd have to do is cut the batten back by yeah. doing five okay. millimeters if you could just, the batten. If, yeah. just exactly that if there's a, a rafter there you're laughing because you can just bring the material down onto the rafter and then back up onto the batten so that anything mm -hmm. that gets down will, will run out now when you get to the bottom of where the roof window is that Secret gutter has got to run out onto the next tile down, if you know what I'm saying. You don't want that water trapped in there. It's got to, it's got to eventually find its way out through that gutter onto the top of the tile. Mm. But that may mean that you've got to just fashion some with an angle grinder, take a tiny scallop out or something to get it in there. Mm. Otherwise, you've got to run it all the way to the bottom yeah, under the tiles into the gutter, yeah? Do you think, can I just pick your brain? So when we had mm. the roofers come back, um, hmm. to try and implement a repair on these windows. Um, yeah. The main issue that they raised was, oh, it's all down to the pitch of the roof. This is what the issue is. It's not the cracked tiles. It's not the flashing. Yeah, yeah. It's the pitch of the yeah. roof that's the problem. We haven't had any leak seemingly anywhere other than where the flashing has sat or where yeah. there has been a cracked tile. So do you think, although we are on the cusp, it is going to be worthwhile not stripping the whole roof off? Just How long has that roof been there now? October last year, and okay, we've had October. no there apart from the windows. Okay, right. So what I would do is, I'm assuming that every one of those tiles isn't nailed down, but you can lift a couple of those tiles up, slide them out, and have a look. So what I would do is I'd pick a couple of random areas away from the roof windows, lift the tile up, have a look at it underneath, and you'll see signs of moisture. If there's any moisture, if there has been any moisture, discoloration on the battens, you know, something on there, You'll, you'll see that it's been happening. If you look under those tiles, it's perfectly dry. I'd leave the roof where it is, and I'd concentrate all your time and effort on making a decent job. You being do a roof window flashing that goes – now, it's no good to you, that particular one, but it would give you an idea of the kind of design that mm -hmm. would be perfect for that because, again, it's made to go like that. The tiles come over the top of it. And you've got these little channels running down the side, you know. And again, you could look at something like, like any of you know Velux or uh, Keylight, any of those roof windows. They also do a flashing for their roof window, which has the same sort of U. I think they call it a U flashing actually for tiles to allow it to to run away. So, mm. you know, that kind of approach I think would be would be good. Yeah. Do you think the glass needs to come out to do a proper job of it, or could could I get away with running the flashing? tight up against the bottom of the glass and sealing it on that edge what do you think how's that glass fixed from memory it was i can't recall exactly what resin but it's quite a thick black gloopy kind of waterproof resin that seals all the way around to hold the glass yeah. and the weight on the frame and the resin is mm. what gives it that integrity they, they didn't look like they were going to come out in a hurry put it like that well okay in that case i'd leave it there i mean i'd always say better to take it out if you can 
if that's the case, what I would then do is I would put some kind of strip around the top where you start the, the flashing coming down. So if you're going to use this this um, synthetic flashing, which looks like lead, it, you know, it's not, it doesn't look horrendous at all. It's just grey plastic in material, if you like. Um, if you're going to use that, just bring it down, put some kind of strip around. Maybe you can get a bit of anthracite looking strip. You know the sort of thing I'm talking about, like an aluminium carpet edging? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. type idea with some few screws so that you can just run a bit of adhesive along the back of the strip yeah, okay screw it in so that it covers the flashing and is tight up against the glass yeah, that's, yeah. 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 so yeah. that nothing can creep in over the top i think yeah. then you'll be okay yeah yeah and then you know it's it's going to be a fun job for sure when you look back we looked at other windows that already had this kind of prefabricated almost outlet that just it perfectly sat beneath the tiles but when we were looking yeah. at costs and comparatives it was all it's one of those if we can do yeah. the same for half the cost but actually yeah. in hindsight i wish we'd <laughs> opted for the other option now but yeah well I, you know i mean i think life is full of those sort of things isn't it but let me talk about the roof just just while we're at it um it's a what we call a cold roof is it it's not the insulation is between the rafters yeah, yeah. so i think is it 270 mil the Quite hefty yeah. insulation, silver backed. Yeah. Is there a ventil any ventilation above it? Have you got a vapor barrier underneath or what? You don't know, do you? I'm, I'm honestly not sure. From memory, no. I believe it was uh, it, we literally battened onto the joist work, so I don't believe there was any kind of membrane put beneath the roof felt, yeah. as it were. When you take those tiles off, as I'm suggesting, you take a couple of tiles off. Just have a good look at everything. If it's a good breather membrane you've got there then the moisture should escape. But that is always a consideration. It's how you ventilate above the insulation to get rid of any moisture. What you could do at some time in the future, if, if it does look like it is a little bit dodgy, put some vinyl paint across the inside, across the ceiling, you know, another coat of white paint. I mean, not a glossy one, a, a matte vinyl, mm -hmm. and it would slow any moisture migrate. It's a kitchen, isn't it, this room? It's open it plan kitchen? living. We've got kitchen, living, dining space all in one. Yeah. So so you're creating a bit of moisture there. Yeah. yeah. You've got a good extractor fan. You've got a good cooker hood or extractor fan in it. It's working yeah. progress. <laughs> so we're getting there. <laughs> Is it? Well, okay. I'll tell you what, then. If it's work in progress, probably a good idea to get that because people don't believe it happens, but it, the amount of moisture that will migrate through sheet of plasterboard over the time it's quite yeah. significant. The, the kitchen and the bathroom and everything else is is key to... Uh, you find this very often in the first year after a building's been built, condensation in the loft, you get huge, you get water dripping everywhere. You think, my goodness, this is terrible. It does disappear because it's all the water that's been used in the build. And as you mm -hmm. know, that's gallons and gallons, um, bucket loads of it has got to escape from the building. You know, all you've got to do is keep the equilibrium, if you like. Just make sure you don't overdo it. I'm thinking, I'm hopeful, you know, keep my fingers crossed that if you sort round those windows out, if you sort the two out that are, are the worst ones, see how you go with those, then maybe you can go and revisit the other two yeah. Yeah. at your leisure. If they're not leaking too much at the moment or at all at the moment, then give you a, at least you won't have to do all four in one hit. Yeah. You know? yeah. Keep us posted, all right? Send us pictures. And as I say, if I'm around that way, uh, I'd love to drop in and have a look and... Uh, you're more than welcome. Oh, yeah. Thank you for your time. All right. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Okay, thanks. All the best to you. Cheers. Thank you.